Today we're going to take a look at the vulnerability service within Red Hat Insights. As a reminder, Insights is included with existing subscriptions for Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and Red Hat OpenShift. I'll focus on the Red Hat Enterprise Linux vulnerability service since it is the most full featured. I'm starting at the dashboard which summarizes some of the most important issues that Insights has found for the systems that are registered to Insights. With vulnerabilities, this focuses on Common Vulnerabilities and Exposures, or CVEs, with security rules and known exploits. Security rules are CVEs given additional visibility due to the elevated risk and exposure associated with them. These are security flaws that may receive significant media coverage and have been scrutinized by the Red Hat product security team using the product security incident response plan workflow to help determine your RHEL environment exposure. These security rules enable you to take the appropriate action to protect your organization. For known exploits, Red Hat analyzes Metasploit data to determine whether code exists publicly to exploit a CVE, or a CVE has already been exploited publicly. The vulnerability service applies the known exploits label to CVEs that meet that criteria. This enhanced threat assessment can help users identify and address those CVEs that pose the most critical risks first. Red Hat recommends users review any CVEs with the known exploit label with high priority and work towards remediating those issues. In this environment with about 100 systems, I have 885 CVEs that I need to address. That's a lot of work. Insights can help me prioritize as we briefly showed on the dashboard. I'm going to do the same thing here using the filters that are built into Insights. Security rules provide deep threat intelligence beyond analyzing the version of RHEL running on a system. Security rules are manually curated to determine whether you are susceptible to a security threat by analyzing system metadata collected by the Insights client. If the vulnerability service identifies a system as exposed to a security rule, there is the potential for elevated security risk and issues should be addressed with urgency. Applying the filter took me from almost 900 CVEs down to 31 that I need to focus on with a higher priority. Looking at the list, I've already triaged a few of these CVEs. Notice the business risk and the status columns have been set, helping me to keep track of where I am in the remediation process. The next one that I need to review is CVE 2022. 29901. I can expand it to see a brief description. Looks like this is the rep bleed vulnerability, and there's a lot of information here. It affects 13 systems in my environment, and I'm going to select it to get more details. As I look through the deep threat intelligence provided by Red Hat, I notice that for a number of the systems, I am affected but not vulnerable. Insights is telling me, based on the current configuration of the system, that while I am using an affected version of the package, due to the configuration of the system, there is no current security impact. This is subject to change and does need to be addressed, but I can do it at a lower priority than the other vulnerabilities. I can just take care of this during my next maintenance window. So I'm going to edit the status to scheduled for patch. Now I'm going to go back to the list of the CVEs and I'm going to filter them even more to see what needs to be addressed. To do this, in addition to the security rule, I'm going to see if I have any CVEs that also have a known exploit. I have one CVE that has both the security rule and the known exploit labels. This is certainly a high priority, so let's take a closer look. This one's a pseudo vulnerability, so we certainly want to address this one. Let's get more details. <sighs> Looking at the description, I want to take care of this one ASAP. The known exploits label does not mean that the vulnerability was exploited on MyRail systems, 
but it does mean that there's a known public exploit associated with the CVE. The security rule summary is telling me that the risk of making a change to this is very low and that Insights has a remediation playbook available to help me mitigate this risk. I'm going to look at the CVE database to get more info. So as I read through and I review these details, I see that in addition to just updating the package, there's also a mitigation option available to me. So if I can't update my system immediately, there is this partial mitigation using system tap. This mitigation sounds like a good idea. And then I can do the full patch later. Close that CVE and return to insights. If I look at the list of the systems that are impacted by this vulnerability, I've got a variety of rel versions that are impacted. If I expand a specific system, it's going to tell me how to resolve it for that specific version of rel. This one's pretty easy. It's just a yum update. If I look over at the remediation column, I can see that there is a playbook available from insights that's going to help me mitigate this issue. I'm going to go ahead and resolve this on the one system to test the mitigation. I'm just going to start with this first system on the list. Checking the box makes the remediate button become available, which will kick off my remediation wizard. We'll name our playbook, review our systems. You can absolutely add multiple systems to this playbook. But again, I want to test this first before I widely deploy it in my environment. I do have the option to use the mitigation, so block pseudo edit with system tap, or I can just do the full yum update. I'm going to take that mitigation for now. Finish and click submit. So this created the playbook for me, and I can click the open playbook button to redirect me to the remediation section of insights. So here's my playbook. I do want to highlight that we have the option to download this playbook and take a look at exactly what's included. Here's the playbook that I just generated from Insights. I scroll down this list. It gives me details on exactly what this playbook is doing. It is a signed playbook, so if I have the proper permissions, I can execute this playbook from within Insights itself. And at the very end, we run Insights again to clear this off the system because it has been mitigated. We'll close this window and return to insights. Everything I've shown you up to this point is included with your existing Red Hat Enterprise Linux subscription. I do have this execute playbook button on the screen. The execute playbook button is only available if you have a Red Hat satellite subscription. The system doesn't have to be connected through a satellite. It can be directly connected through RHC or remote host configuration, but you do have to have the satellite subscription in order to execute the playbook. I can click that execute playbook button. In this case, my system is directly connected. So it's not connected through a satellite and it is ready to be remediated. So I can just click the execute playbook on one system. The job switches to running and there's a button beside it that will let me view. If I look down the screen, there's also an activity tab that I can select. Either way, we'll let you see more information on this job that is actively running. When the job is succeeded, the status will change to successful and we can return back to the remediations page, which will show us that that issue is resolved. So what we've just shown you is a quick summary of how to identify a CVE, prioritize the CVE, and then remediate the CVE. Before we leave the vulnerability service, let's take a look at some of the reports that are available to you. If I expand vulnerability, there is a reports option, and you can either generate an executive report or a customized report. Let's take a look at the executive report first. This executive report quickly shows you the number of systems that you're analyzing, the numbers of CVEs across those systems, and the number of security rules. We'll also highlight the common vulnerability scoring system or CVSS range. 
and give you the top three vulnerabilities within your environment. We'll also show you the top three security rules that exist in your infrastructure. This is a great summary of the high level issues that you may want to address. Let's close this and look at the custom report. This custom report will let you create your own report, highlighting what is important to you. So if you only wanted to see systems with security rules and CVSS base scores from six to 10, you could create this custom report that best suits your needs. As defined in the report builder, this will only show you CVEs with security rules that have a CVSS base score between 6.0 and 10. And that's exactly what we see within this report. That concludes a quick look at the Red Hat Insights vulnerability service for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. As a reminder, Insights has services available for Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Red Hat OpenShift, and Red Hat Ansible Automation Platform, and the value is included within your existing subscriptions, so there's nothing more to buy, just start using it. Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoyed this look at the Red Hat Insights Vulnerability Service.